Do you like my sword, 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 my diamond sword, sword? No. People still ask about this, and I realized I've never actually made a video about it, so here we go. Would a sword made of diamond be any good? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. I've made that joke before. Here is the long answer. So first off, what is diamond? Diamond is a solid form of carbon with crystalline atomic structure. It has the highest number of atoms per volume, and its atomic bonds are remarkably strong, which makes it the hardest and least compressible material, but also inflexible and brittle. The bonds between atoms are so strong, it doesn't allow much deformation. If you try to put a dent in diamond, it's practically impossible. Whereas steel can also resist deformation, but it's not as stiff and capable of elastic deformation, which means the ability of the material to change its shape temporarily and then return to its original shape. What diamond lacks is toughness, the ability to resist cracking and fracturing, whereas steel has plenty. Of course, steel can crack and fracture too, but it takes quite a lot of impact force for that to happen. If you made the exact same sword blade of steel and diamond, assuming a world where steel and diamond cost the same, shall we say, and then you struck one with the other, the steel blade would probably be damaged, but it would be in one piece, whereas the diamond blade would shatter. Bronze goes in the opposite direction. It lacks hardness, but it's got plenty of toughness. So on impact, this is very unlikely to break, but it's more likely to bend and then stay deformed, which also means that the edge can roll and otherwise deform. It's not as likely to chip. If you were to keep bending this repeatedly, so bend it, straighten it, bend, straighten, at the point where it bends, you would basically be work hardening it, so then it's more likely to break, but otherwise, not so much. And of course, with a steel sword, it depends a lot on how it's heat treated and tempered. You can make steel extremely hard, but then it becomes brittle, or you can make it fairly soft. If you compare mild steel, for example, to high carbon steel, you know, let's say with a particularly high carbon content, say 1095 high carbon steel, the latter is much more likely to break, but unlikely to deform permanently, whereas mild steel will deform permanently rather easily, not as easy to break. You get the idea. If we look at a katana blade, which is traditionally differentially hardened, you have a harder edge and a softer spine. So the idea is the hard edge uh, will retain the sharpness for longer and is more resistant to abrasion and wear while the uh, spine allows it to deform without breaking. Whereas if you have a mono steel blade where the, uh, the hardness and toughness is basically in between the edge and the spine of a katana, roughly, there's plenty of variation. But now it may deform, so the edge may roll or otherwise permanently deform. It may chip, the entire blade may bend a little bit or it may break but either is not as likely. Basically the difference between min-maxing versus a more balanced build. Both have their pros and cons, obviously. So what about diamond? Is there a way to make this work potentially? Just like a differentially hardened katana blade, you could combine two different materials in an attempt to compensate for each other's weakness. One historical example of that being done is the Aztec maqua wheat which was a wooden core with obsidian blades. I have one that I was supposed to test, and I did test it, but it didn't turn out so well. Yikes, the bottle is too much. Okay, yeah, there's one here. Yep. One on there. Did something on the opposite side fall off too? Yeah, yeah. Apparently because the pitch used to glue these blades ended up too brittle, ironically. So these kept breaking off, falling off, and you can make that better, you know, depending on the, the composition of the glue, you can optimize that. But always the problem is that the obsidian blades, again, just like diamond, are hard but very brittle. In fact, the extreme sharpness that obsidian is famous for is also its downfall. What makes it so sharp is that it fractures into an extremely thin feather edge. And that will, of course, 
part material more effectively. The thinner it is, the more effective it is. But that also means you have very little material all the way at the, at the end because it becomes so thin and is also brittle, it will just crumble on impact. So basically you have that extreme sharpness, the, the maximum sharpness you have for one cut. On the first impact, much of that feather edge is already going to crumble. It's kind of a disposable weapon. And in fact, that's part of what makes this so horrible, the fact that obsidian will shatter and remain in the wound. The Makwahuit is commonly interpreted as a non-metal sword, but I see it really more as an enhanced club. It's really more of an impact device that has the very nasty side effect of cutting into flesh and probably leaving fragments of obsidian inside of the wound. It's worth pointing out that depending on the design, it may look more sword-like or more like a club. And of course, there were other Aztec weapons that were in fact war clubs or spear-like. Now, it also depends on how you make it. If instead of using that feather edge, you chip or maybe even grind an edge, it's not going to be as crazy sharp it doesn't thin out as much, but it's going to be more durable. You can sacrifice some sharpness for durability. It also makes quite a difference how you shape that core. This one here has hard 90 degree corners. The problem with that is, as the blades cut into the material, the blades taper naturally, but eventually this hard corner here is going to hit the target and it's going to stop there. It's not as likely to enter the target because suddenly you have a hard shoulder there that, that impacts and that's not likely to stop the cut. If you taper it, you have a better chance of penetrating and I'm assuming that's what they generally did. So my point in talking so much about the Makwahuit is you could do the exact same thing with diamond. It's a pretty similar material, at least in terms of hardness and lack of toughness. There's something called polycrystalline diamond or PCD, which is made through a process called sintering, which fuses diamond crystals with a metallic binder like tungsten and cobalt. That method alleviates some of the brittleness of natural diamond. It's still fairly brittle compared to something like steel, but not quite as much so. The problem is diamond is even more brittle than obsidian, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure where polycrystalline diamond ranks. It's less brittle than natural diamond. I don't know how it compares to obsidian, but either way, it's conceivable that you could make something like say a polypropylene core, be it a macrohuid or some kind of sword design with maybe polycrystalline diamond edge laid into it. So that edge could still, of course, chip or crack or otherwise be damaged on impact, but the advantage would be excellent edge retention. It would stay sharp for very long with a lot of use, so you wouldn't have to resharpen it much, if at all. Of course, it also depends on how the diamond is processed and shaped and all that, but it's, it could be possible in, say, a fantasy world where diamond doesn't have this artificially inflated price as it has in, in our economy, but a blade made entirely of diamond or crystal for that matter, as cool as it would be, doesn't work in the real world. You would need magic for that. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Stay sharp.